Let's talk about the difference between a factor and a multiple. These can be tricky, lots of people confuse them. This video is gonna use the Friar model, some people say Freyer, to showcase the difference between both of these. So we're gonna use a strategy that is typically used when we introduce new vocabulary terms, but we're gonna use it in math. Here's what's great about the Friar model. It allows us to give students examples and non-examples without giving them a definition. You can also use it by giving them a definition and letting them come up with their own examples and non-examples. They can also determine the characteristics. You'll see that in the middle I've got factor and then we're gonna do one for multiple as well. Let's start with um, some examples and see if you can come up with your own definition for a factor. So let's take, for instance, the factors of six. Here would be some examples. One times six is six. Two times three is also six. So if I list the factors of six, I would write one, two, three, six. Um, another way that I could show this on my Friar model is to just do something like this. And these are both called factors. Now let's look at a non-example and see if you can come up with a definition on your own. Here is a non-example. Let's say, for instance, I'm skip counting by tens. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. These are not factors. These are not factors. In fact, they're actually called something else. I won't spoil the video for you so you can figure it out. Now what I'd like you to do is take a moment and see if you can come up with your own definition for a factor. If you said something like numbers we can multiply together to get another number, you would be right on. Now that we've looked at examples, non-examples, and a definition, let's deep dive and see if we can come up with some characteristics of a factor. This is really where our learning goes a little bit deeper because we need to understand the difference between factors and multiples, and I think when we look at the characteristics, it will help us to better analyze which one we're dealing with, factors or multiples. Let's take a look. When we think about characteristics of a factor, one thing we always land on is that a factor has to be less than or equal to the number. In other words, if I'm trying to find factors of six, I won't have the number seven, for example. Another characteristic is that there's a finite amount of factors. In other words, I can count them. Now let's take a look at multiples and compare the two. You'll notice that for multiples, I've got a new Friar model and multiple is written in the middle. Just like we did for factors, we're gonna start with the examples and non-examples. So let's start with an example. Here would be multiples of two. We would have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We could keep going literally forever. It would go until positive infinity. Now let's look at some non-examples. I could think about two and five are not multiples of 10. By this point, you should know that two and five would be factors, not multiples of 10. See if you can come up with your own definition for multiples and write that on your Friar model. Hopefully you came up with a definition similar to mine that says a number found by multiplying any other natural number to the given value. Remember, natural numbers are one, two, three, four, five, etc. They don't include zero. Lastly, let's talk about the characteristics of multiples because these are different than factors. One major characteristic about multiples is that there's an infinite number of them, meaning you could literally die, skip counting by tens, forever. You could keep on going, your life would end, you would not have reached the end of the positive numbers. So there's an infinite number of multiples. One other thing about multiples that's kind of interesting is that they always have to be greater than or equal to the number. In other words, you'll never get a multiple of 10 that's less than 10. 
Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is really process the difference between factors and multiples, because that's where it gets tricky, right? How do you know you're dealing with a factor? Check yourself. Do you, can you answer that question? How do you know you're dealing with a multiple? Check yourself on that one. Can you answer that one? What's the difference between the two? Hopefully this video was helpful and you can now come up with some definitions, examples, non-examples, and characteristics for both factors and multiples.